Greetings Earthlings, today I'm back with a review of another Neumann microphone. That microphone being the Neumann TLM49. If you are interested in this microphone, it will cost you around $1,700. Like always, I'll throw some links down below. Full disclosure, the folks over at Sweetwater did send me this microphone so that I was able to review it during microphone month. If you do want to check out any of the bundles or deals on mics that they have, I will throw a link at the top of the description. And for the majority of this review, I will have the microphone connected directly to the Focusrite 18i20 second gen. My gain will be set at one o'clock, recording 24 bit 48 kilohertz, I will not do any kind of post processing, but I may have to boost it a little bit in post, so check the doobly doo to see what I diddly did. And now let's talk about what comes in the box. That's so heavy. Of course you are going to get the microphone. You will get a very robust feeling shock mount, a 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter, and a bit of documentation. Then as far as the build quality, it feels absolutely outstanding. It has an all metal body as well as a metal mesh grill, which does have a little bit of give to it. So I'm not gonna squeeze it because I don't want to dent it. As you move around the microphone, there are no switches, no dials, no multiple polar patterns or anything. I also want to point out that this is a very chunky microphone. So here is a quick size comparison between the AT2020 and the TLM103. You can tell that this thing is quite rotund. So just keep that in mind if size matters to you. And another thing, if it matters to you, this microphone is made in Germany. Then as far as the specs, this microphone has a cardioid only polar pattern, a frequency response of 20 Hertz to 20 kilohertz, a sensitivity of around negative 38 dB, a self noise of only 12 dBA, a max SPL of 129 dB, an impedance of 50 ohms, and a phantom power requirement of 48 volts. Now I am spinning around the TLM49 to 90 degrees so you can hear the off-axis rejection and coloration. We'll continue around the microphone to 180 degrees. Here's the rear of the mic. Continuing around to the second 90 degree angle. There we are right there. And then rotating and ending at the front of the microphone. Now I really hate doing these tests on the more expensive microphones, but we have to do it. Let's go ahead and test the plosive rejection on this thing. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Now I am right on top of the microphone to demonstrate the proximity effect on this thing. About three inches off of the mic with it pointed at the corner of my mouth and here is how it is sounding. About one foot away from the microphone, two feet away from the microphone, and about four feet away from the microphone. Now I am typing on a keyboard with Gatoron blue switches to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And for you Leet gamers, now I am typing on the sad W keys. Here is how the microphone sounds in a well-treated room. And here is how the microphone sounds in a completely untreated room. Now to see how well the provided shock mount performs, I will go ahead and tap on the desk to see how much of that noise it rejects. And I will tap on the boom arm. Now I am going to go ahead and tap on the body of the microphone to see if there are any kind of resonant frequencies. Now I want to do a very quick spoken word test where I switch between the Focusrite 18i20 and the Universal Audio X8 so you can hear what kind of impact those interfaces preamps and analog to digital converters have on the sound of this microphone. Up until now, I have been speaking into the Focusrite 18i20 with the gain at one o'clock, and here is how that audio has been sounding. Now I have switched over to the Universal Audio X8 my gain is set at 35 decibels. I'm still recording 24 bit, 48 kilohertz. I am around the same distance. And here is how the audio sounds. Let's jump back to the focus right so you can hear that. And then we'll jump back to this one more time. 
back again on the Focusrite 18i20 so you can hear how I sound on this one more time before we jump back to the Universal Audio and let you hear that again. And again, now we are running through the Universal Audio X8, 35 dB of gain, 24 bit, 48 kilohertz, same distance from the microphone, and here is how it sounds. That's it, let's go ahead and do another test. Now I want to do another very quick test where I run this microphone through an external preamp. Today we will be using the LA610 Mark II. We are going to be bypassing the compressor and only using the tube preamp. So currently I am on the Focusrite just direct in, and here is how that is sounding. Let's go ahead and jump to the preamp now. And now I have the microphone running into the LA610 with the gain set at plus 10, so we are getting the most tube coloration that we can get. Then we are running into the X8 at a line level, and here is how it is sounding. I know that this is a very specific test and signal chain, but I wanted to provide you another point of reference so you don't just hear the microphone through built-in interface preamps. Now you have heard it through the focus right, the Universal Audio X8 inbuilt preamp, and the LA610 external tube preamp. Hopefully that gives you a good understanding of how this microphone sounds. Let's go ahead and do some comparisons now. Now I want to do a very quick comparison between the Neumann TLM49 and a couple of other microphones that are available on the market so we can see how it compares against the competition and also to see how many microphones I can stack in my arms before I drop them and see how many, whoa, how many people get furious with me for being so incredibly irresponsible with all of this extremely expensive gear. Okay, this this is such a bad idea. Let's go ahead and do the comparison because I am probably going to drop these and then hate myself. Comparison time. Like always, we will start on the microphone that we are reviewing. This is the TLM49, six inches off, gain at one o'clock, 24 bit, 48 kilohertz, no post processing, but check the lower third to see how much I boosted it. And let's jump to the first microphone. Okay, first up, we are on the AKG P120, a cardioid-only condenser microphone. Six inches off, gain at one o'clock. Check the lower third to see how much I boosted this. And here is how this sounds, $80 versus $1,700. let us jump to the next mic. Again, we are back on the TLM49, so you can get a feel for it and hear how this microphone sounds compared to this next mic. Let's do that now. Now I am on the Audio-Technica AT2020. This is a $100 cardioid-only condenser microphone. Same distance, same gain setting, check the lower third. And let's jump back to the TLM49 and do some more comparisons. Who would have thunk it? We are back on the TLM49 again because I want you to hear how this microphone sounds in between every microphone we're comparing it against. Here is how it sounds. Let's do the next comparison. Now I am on the Lewitt LCT240 Pro. This is a $150 cardioid only condenser microphone. This is a much brighter, much more modern sounding microphone. And here is how it sounds, same distance, same gain setting. Check the lower third. I'm going to say the same thing over and over and over again. I apologize. Let's jump back to the 49 and do more comparisons. What a shocker, I say that every single time. Here is how the TLM49 sounds. Nothing has changed. If you forgot, $1,700. Let's jump to the next mic. Now we are on the Rode NT1. This is a $270 cardioid only condenser microphone. I am at the same distance, the same gain setting. And here is how this sounds compared to the TLM49. Not as mid forward, but very neutral, very balanced sounding. And here's how it sounds. Let's jump back to the 49 and do some more comparisons. Again, we are back on the TLM 49 so you can get a feel for it and hear how this microphone sounds compared to this next mic. Let's do that now. Now I am on the Shure KSM32, another cardioid only solid state condenser microphone. This costs $500. No pads, no filters are engaged and I am at the same distance, the same gain setting. Here is how this is sounding. I know people will be furious with me because in all of these recordings, there is a low end 50 cycle rumble. 
That's an AC unit I have no control over. I apologize for the inconvenience. I don't put any filters, any processing on, so I don't even run a high pass filter. Live with it. I have to. This is the 32. <laughs> Sorry for the diatribe. KSM 32, let's jump back to the 49 and do some more comparisons. Okay, back on the TLM 49 again. Even though these comparisons are a huge pain in the butt, I'm going to continue to make them because then you're not hearing the microphone in a vacuum and you understand the context of the microphone. This is how the TLM 49 sounds. Next mic. Now I am on the Neumann TLM 102. This is a $700 cardioid only solid state condenser microphone. Same distance, same gain setting, and here is how it is sounding. Do you like the $700 TLM-102 or the $1,700 TLM-49? Let me know in the comments down below. Check the lower third also to see how much I boost each of these in post. And let's jump back to the 49 and do some more comparisons. I don't know how many of these comparison things we've done so far, but we have a couple more to go. Here is how the TLM-49 sounds. Nothing has changed. Let's jump to the next one. Now we are on the first multi-pattern condenser microphone. This is the KSM-44A. We are on the cardioid mode, no filters, no pads. This costs $1,000, same distance, same gain setting. And here is how this compares to a $1,700 TLM-49. Let's go ahead and do some more comparisons. Again, we are back on the TLM-49 so you can get a feel for it and hear how this microphone sounds compared to this next mic. Let's do that now. Now I am on the Newman TLM-103. This costs $1,100. This is a cardioid-only, solid-state, transformerless condenser microphone. Same distance, same gain setting, and here is how it is sounding. Check the lower third to see how much I boosted this in post. And there you go, Neumann versus Neumann. Which one do you like the best? Let's do some more, let's do some more comparisons. Let's do it right now. Guess who's back, back again? It's me, and this is the TLM-49. I bet you thought I was going in a different direction. Wrong, I do not want a copyright strike on this channel, so we will not be doing that. I will not be quoting anybody, not even green eggs and ham. Here is how the TLM-49 sounds. Let's jump to the next microphone so you can hear how it compares against that. Now we are on another multi-pattern condenser microphone. This is the Austrian Audio OC818. This costs $1,200. I am on the cardioid mode. No high pass filter, no pad engaged. Same distance, same gain setting. And here is how it sounds compared to the Neumann TLM-49. Which one do you like the best? Let me know in the comments. And let's jump to the next microphone and do some more comparisons. I don't think I've asked you to do this yet, but let me know in the comments down below which of these microphones you prefer the most. Do you like the TLM-49, the mid-forward sound, the smoothness of it, or do you prefer one of these other microphones? Let's jump to one or two more. I don't know how many we've done. Next, we are on a very rarely seen microphone on this channel, the Blue Mouse. This is a $1,250 condenser microphone, cardioid only and solid state. And here is how this sounds, same distance, same gain setting. Check the lower third to see how much I boosted each of these in post. And there you go, Blue versus Neumann, $1,250 versus $1,700. Is it worth the additional money? Let's go ahead and do a couple more comparisons, only a couple. Again, we are back on the TLM-49 so you can get a feel for it and hear how this microphone sounds compared to this next mic. Let's do that now. Now I am on the Telefunken TF-47. This is a multi-pattern condenser microphone. This costs $1,900, and you may be wondering why are you comparing this microphone to the TF-49? Well, 47 and 49 are two digits away, so it's too different. I figured, why not? <laughs> I think they're both going for more of a vintage 47-ish style sound, so I thought it might be interesting to hear a tube offering that offers a somewhat similar sound to the transformerless solid-state version. There you go, Telefunken TF-47. Let's jump back and do one more comparison. Guess what it's going to be? 
and I believe this is going to be the final comparison that we are doing. I think everybody knows exactly what it's going to be. It's the same every single video, but let's jump to this final microphone so you can hear how it compares to the 49. And lastly, you all knew what it was going to be. This is the Neumann U87AI. This is a multi-pattern transformered condenser microphone, 32 to $3,600. I am at the same distance, the same gain setting, and here is how this sounds on the cardioid mode. No filter, no pad engaged, and there you go. That is a comparison of 10 microphones versus the Neumann TLM49. Let me know in the comments down below which of these microphones was your favorite. Is there one that stood out to you? Do you like the TLM49? TLM, which one was your favorite? Let's go ahead now and jump to a quick music test. I've got another microphone, but I've just got to test them all to find out which one is the best now. Hey! All right. Mark my words. I will never stop searching until I am six feet under this ground or the world ends. Either or, I'll never stop trying to find the greatest microphone of all time. But secret, we know it doesn't exist because it's subjective. I'll never stop searching and testing, though. Okay, conclusion time. All right, what to say here? Well, it's a Neumann microphone, and I like <laughs> I like Neumann microphones. And first up in terms of pros, you do have a mid-forward and pretty smooth and articulate midsection. Also, the off-axis coloration on this thing was great. The shock mount performed amazingly, and the self-noise is only 12 dBA. And then as far as cons, you know one of my most consistent complaints. Give me a regular firm mount as well. Do not just give me a shock mount because I need to mic stuff up in small areas with my isolation cab. That may be a unique issue, but it's something that is persistent. And secondly, this is a chonky microphone. It's a big chungus. It's a big me memes big things, all the jokes. It's a big microphone. If you have constraints in terms of the size of microphone that you can use, that may be an issue for you. If you don't have any issues, if you have no size constraints, that's what she said, then go for it. I'm so sorry. Then as far as my overall thoughts and opinions of this microphone, on the electric guitar, the first thing that I noticed was how clean and precise the low end was. It was not muddy. It was not loose. It was so clear. Then you have this mid forward sound as you would expect with a microphone with a 49 name. And then when we get to the top end of the microphone, it is present. It's still there. It's not dark. It's not muffled. But at the same time, it's not piercing or sharp. I really enjoyed it on the electric, and I think it is very usable for that application. Next up on the acoustic guitar, I found it to be a little bit shouty, a little bit unpleasant when I started to play a little bit more aggressively, but if I'm playing less aggressively, I think it offers a very unique and interesting sound, a little bit more mid-forward, but the thing that was shocking to me is it doesn't lose that articulation and attack on the top end. You still capture all that information right off the strings, and I really enjoyed it on a cover song I made on the Bandrew Plays channel. I'll link that in one of the cards if you want to check that out. Worked really well on the acoustic. Next up for singing, that is probably my favorite application for this microphone. 
I just love the midsection on this thing. It's not too much mids. It's not too little mids. It's not overly nasally. It's not anything. It is just a wonderful mid-sounding microphone. You still get a bit of air to it. It's not dark. It's not muffled. It still has a little bit of that shine to it. And then the low end just gets out of the way. It is not muddy. It is not unclear. It is precise, to use that word again. I really enjoyed this thing for singing. And lastly, for spoken word, I am going to sound like a broken record. It is a mid-forward sound. If that's not what you're going for, you may not like it, but I tend to like more mid-forward sounding microphones, and that's what you're getting here. The top end, you don't lose any of that clarity, but it is not an incredibly bright microphone. When you have the t t t you can still hear all the articulation, but it doesn't become grating over long periods. And then again, the low end is controlled. It gets out of the way. It's not muddy. It is clear. Really nice all around sound if you're going for a more mid forward spoken word mic. And to wrap up, would I recommend the Neumann TLM 49? Kind of. Let me start by saying that I really enjoy how this microphone sounds. As far as mid forward mics go, I think this is a great sounding option. And also in the lineup of Neumann microphones, I think it offers a very different sound from at least everything that I have. Sounds different from everything I compared it against. But the reason that I'm not 100% saying yes is I think this mic has a lot of competition if you compare it to less modern sounding microphones, meaning less overboosted in the treble and air. And at the $250, $500 price point, you have the NT1, the KSM32. I think those both give this mic a run for its money. Then at 1000 bucks, you got the KSM44A at $1,200, OC818. And then if you go above this, you got that Telefunken TF47. And oh boy, that's a tasty son of a gun. I really like how that microphone sounds got that lovely tube warmth and roundness to it. I loved it. 200 bucks more than this, and you have to worry about the cost of maintenance on a tube mic. But with that being said, this is a unique sounding mic, and none of the mics that I just mentioned are replacements for it. They are just alternatives. If you do like the sound of this and you have the budget for it, then I would recommend it, but just keep your options open, check out everything that's available to you, and do some comparisons on your own. All right, I think that is it for this video. If you found this fun, interesting, or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. I want to say a huge thank you to Sweetwater again for sending this out for me to review. And if you wanna check out any of their bundles or mic discounts for Mic Month, check the link at the top of the description. If you want to hear a higher quality recording of this review, go to podcastage.com. I will also use this for a couple more episodes of the Bandrew Says podcast. I'll link that in the cards up above. And if you want to hang out in the Discord server, podcastage.com slash discord. And if you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, I remember to do it. You can do so by clicking the join button and joining at the $5 tier or higher, or heading to patreon.com slash podcastage and joining at the $5 tier or higher. It really does help me continue to bring you these videos. So until next time, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. I'll talk to you later. Bye.